Recently, I had a false positive PCR test result for SARS-CoV-2. I followed it up with a rapid at-home antibody test for SARS-CoV-2. In this video, I'll explain how these rapid antibody tests work and what the results mean for me. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and recently I had a false positive PCR test for SARS-CoV-2. You can see the video I made about that. It's linked above here. It'll explain what the results meant and how I thought it was a false positive result. There's still a faint possibility that I actually was at the end of a asymptomatic infection, which is why my CT value for the PCR test was low. So to address that issue, I decided to do an at-home rapid antibody test. And this would check for antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 virus particles. And I was sent this test uh, by a company who's developing the test. And I would like to show you how it works. I'll then show you how it was done, what my result was, and what it means. First, let's take a look at what it means to have an immune response uh, after an infection with any virus. In this slide, I am showing an immune response on the y-axis with time after infection. So we're looking at either antibodies or T cells in an individual. When you get your first infection, sometime between seven and 14 days, you generate an antibody and a T cell response against the virus. Once that infection is cleared, the immune response is then declined to some low level, which protects you from subsequent infection. Now we can measure the presence of antibodies in our blood quite easily with at-home tests. These are called lateral flow assays. And that's the sort of test that I did on myself. Uh, and I wanna now explain to you how it works. It all starts with a drop of blood, which contains uh, the antibodies that you produce when you're infected. When these antibodies are first produced, the very first ones are a type of antibody called IgM. Those are later replaced with antibodies of a type called IgG, and the IgM antibodies eventually go away. So looking for IgM and IgG antibodies is a way to tell whether you're early in an infection or much later. Okay, what's a lateral flow assay? Those of you who have taken uh, pregnancy tests are familiar with this. It is a very simple device. You put a sample and it reads out a result. In this case, this is a pregnancy test, which uh, has at one end an absorbent pad. Uh, you put urine on that. The urine flows by capillary action through the device and in a way which we'll describe in a minute, the device shows lines depending on whether you have certain protein in your urine, which is indicative of pregnancy. So you can see in this test, a single line means you're not pregnant, but that single line means the assay has worked. It's a control line. If you have two lines, it means you're pregnant because that second line means the assay is picking up the protein in your urine, which indicates that you're pregnant. In a similar way, we can look for antibodies. This is actually an antigen test. We're looking for a protein. We can also look for antibodies that are produced during virus infection. And that is the basis for the test that I did on myself. So here's a diagram of a lateral flow assay to detect viral antibodies. This graphic illustrates one way of designing a lateral flow assay. There are certainly other ways that it can be done. And I don't actually know that this represents how the kit that I used actually functions. But the basic principles are the same, and this will serve to illustrate how the assay works. It's constructed on a pad, which is covered with uh, different pieces of absorbent material, and you typically would add your blood to one end of the pad. This is all encased in a plastic container, of course. And then the blood components move from left to right by capillary flow, and along the way, the reactions take place. And that's why it's called a lateral flow assay, because the material you put on one end flows laterally to the other end. 
Now, if we start with blood and we're looking for antiviral antibodies, this could be a mixture of IgM or IgG antibodies, and I've given them uh, two different colors. I'm, I'm pretty sure the IgM or the magenta, I'm pretty sure I did that on purpose so I would remember, IgM and IgG. So you put a drop of blood on the sample pad, and then the fluid begins to move to the right by capillary flow. It then passes this first pad, which contains the reagents that are going to give you a readout. And they include gold anti-rabbit IgG conjugate. This is the control material. These are antibodies against rabbit IgG, and they're going to be involved in the reaction later on. They're coupled to gold particles, and that is one way to make a line on the rapid flow assay. That is a line that you can see. Also on this pad are gold particles, those are the yellow circles, conjugated to the viral protein or the viral antigen, and it's that antigen whose antibodies you are looking for. So in the case of these rapid lateral flow assays to detect SARS-CoV-2 antibodies, they're typically looking for antibodies to the spike glycoprotein. So we would put the spike protein conjugated to gold beads uh, on this pad here. So as the blood is put on the sample pad, it moves across this first reagent pad here, and it picks up these reagents. And then uh, the, the sample is going to move towards three different zones. Uh, one zone where there are antibodies to human IgM placed. They're linked to the pad. A second where we have antibodies to human IgG. And a third where we have anti-rabbit antibodies. And so I think you can see right away that each of these is going to be picking up a different kind of antibody. The yellow will pick up human IgM antibodies. The blue will pick up human IgG antibodies. And the green will pick up the rabbit antibodies that have the gold. And that's the control for our reaction. It makes sure that everything works. Because here is a anti-rabbit IgG, and we're going to see if we can pick those up uh, by these anti-rabbit antibodies. So again, you put the blood at the left, it begins to flow to the right. It picks up the reagents and then moves on. So the next step is shown here. Now we have picked up the viral antigen gold complexes here, both an IgG and an IgM antibody have reacted with those proteins. And of course, here's the rabbit gold antibody as well. And of course, if you're very early in infection, you would only have IgM antibodies. If you're very late, uh, you would have IgG only. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you could have both. The next step is the final step where you read out the lines. All the way on the right is our control line. So we have the rabbit antibodies that are conjugated to gold. They're reacting with anti-rabbit IgG. That gives you a line the line, again, is formed by the gold particles. That tells you the assay is working. Uh, and then if you have IgG antibodies, these antibodies that are stuck to the pad, these are anti-IgG antibodies. So they're pulling down or holding IgG antibodies, which are then in turn coupled to SARS-CoV-2 viral spike protein or whatever protein you're looking for. Of course, you can have IgG molecules that are not reacting with spike in your blood, and these would be bound by uh, the IG, anti-IgG antibodies on the pad, but they wouldn't give you a line because they wouldn't be binding to gold via the viral protein. So that's our line for IgG. And then, of course, uh, IgM antibodies will be grabbed by the anti-IgM antibodies on the pad. And if they have the viral protein coupled to the gold sphere, which again was put on the reagent pad, uh, we'll get a line showing up here. So that's how the assay works. It's relatively straightforward in its concept, not so easy to make so that it works properly. And this is something that can be done at home using just a drop of blood. You can also do design a lateral flow assay for a viral protein if you want to look in the course of an infection to actually see if you're infected, not just if you're making antibodies, but if you have viral proteins present, you can do a lateral flow assay for viral proteins. So here uh, it's illustrated using your clinical sample, could be blood, could be a nasal wash, which has viral antigens, is put on the sample pad. Uh, this moves past a reagent pad, which contains antibodies uh, to your antigen coupled to gold. We'll then move across uh, the, the wicking pad by capillary flow, and you see now that our viral antigen in red has been picked up by these 
reagent antibodies. And then finally, they will, these antibodies will be bound uh, on the test line. In this case, the antibodies attached to the matrix are actually antibodies to the viral protein. So they are binding the viral protein, which is in turn is already bound to the uh, antibody to the protein coupled to gold, and that'll give you a line. And of course, we have a controlled test line, which shows that the assay is working. Uh, in this case, uh, these are antibodies uh, to the uh, IgG. So that's how the lateral flow assay for either antibodies to viral proteins or for viral proteins works. Let me now show you how I did the assay on my sample. As you can see, these kits are still in development. There's handwriting on the lateral flow cassette, for example, and it hasn't yet been assembled into its final form. So I received as part of this kit two lateral flow cartridges, as you can see here, together with lancets to pierce your finger and a little pipette. And so all I did was to take the end off of the lancet the, the lancet or the needle is buried in there. It's got a spring in it that juts into your finger. It makes a little hole, blood comes out. You take one of the pipettes and you draw the blood up to a line. It takes a little bit of squeezing to get uh, the blood up to that line. Uh, and then you put the blood uh, in the sample pad on the lateral flow cassette, as you can see here. You then put a drop of buffer, which helps to wick or move the sample by capillary action uh, to the remainder of the cassette. And here's the result that I got. So you can see at the bottom is the sample pad where I initially put the blood. When I added the buffer, the sample then moved uh, through the reagent region where it picks up the reagents that we talked about earlier. And then the three areas of the pad with antibodies bound to them, the IgM region, the IgG region, and the control region. So you can see this is the result from my assay. Assay worked because you can see a line at the control, but there are neither IgG nor IgM antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. So what does this mean for me? This means that I have no antibodies to SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. That could mean that I was never infected with SARS-CoV-2 and therefore my false positive PCR was in, in reality a false positive and not the end of a asymptomatic infection. However, there's some caveats, of course. Rapid at-home lateral flow antibody tests are not perfect. They can have both false positives, but in our case, the relevant part would be a false negative. In other words, maybe I was infected and I do have antibodies, but the assay is not picking it up. Now, to address that, you can repeat the assay. And I took another blood sample and used the other cassette and repeated it, and it was also negative. Uh, ideally, one would have a different assay altogether. Not all of us have access to that. So I'm confident saying that I was never infected with SARS-CoV-2. I have no antibodies to the virus. My initial false positive PCR was indeed a false positive PCR and not the end of an asymptomatic infection. I hope that helps you to understand how these lateral flow assays work. The one that I used is under development. It's not yet available. It's not yet been approved, but at some point soon, assays like this one will be available for us to test our antibodies at home. And as you saw from my demonstration, it's not very hard to do. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and I'm Earth's virology professor.